Yeah, Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Um, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sula Prabhupada. Uh, uh, welcome to the uh, today's uh, daily call of His Holiness Chandramoli Swami Maharaj. Uh, so today, uh, Maharaj will continue to enlighten us on the glories of um, Damodarela from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 9, Verse 10. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Guru I'll share the verse. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Anvachamanam Jani Vyachalaj Joni Bharakvanta Yati Sumadhyava Sivaina Vishwam Sita Kesa Vandhana Sita Pusunam Gupta Gupta Sita Pusunam Gupta Param Sita Translation, while following Krishna, Mother Yasoda, her thin waist overburdened by her heavy breasts, naturally had to reduce, reduce her speed. Because of following Krishna very swiftly, her hair became loose and the flowers in her hair were pulling after her. Yet she did not fail to, yet she did not fail to capture the sun Krishna. Purport, yogis cannot capture Krishna by severe penances and severity. Mother Yasoda, despite all obstacles, finally was finally able to catch Krishna without difficulty. This is the difference between a yogi and a bhakta. Yogis cannot enter into the effulgence of Krishna. Yasya Prabha Prabha Do Jagananda Koti Kotish. To in that effulgence, there are millions of universes, but yogis and jnanis cannot enter that effulgence even after many, many years of austerities. The bhaktas can capture Krishna simply by love and affection. This is the example shown here by Mother Yasoda. Krishna therefore confirms that if one wants to capture him, one must undertake devotional service. Bhakti mam abhajananti avanyascha svitatvataha Bhaktas enter even the plane of Krishna very easily, but less intelligent yogis and jnanis by his meditation remain running after Krishna. Even if they enter Krishna's effulgence, they run. Vanchakopa to Rubischa, Kripa, Sindhu, Yade, Vacha, Pakita, Nam, Pavane, Gyo, Vaishnavi, Gyo, Namaho, Namaha, Jai, Shri Krishna, Jai, Dharma, Murti, Namasi, Advaita, Gadatma, Sivasa, Vipar, Bhakti, Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So, karmis are full of material desires. They want to enjoy this material world. 
Therefore, they have no chance of approaching Krishna because they are approaching not him, but they're approaching his material energy for material and for enjoyment. Therefore, they can't approach Krishna. Karma yogis, a little better, but still because they're attached to this material world, they can't approach Krishna. Gyanis, drilling the respiration, forming various types of philosophical feats to approach the Supreme Lord. Fall short. The yogis, they are tapasis. Although they perform severe austerities, even the devotees can't perform some of the austerities that they do. Yogis, still the devotees are in a better position because they can approach Krishna. Why? Because they're engaged in service to the Lord. Bhakti Amama Vijayanti Aranyas Yasmi Tatva Dhanatato Mam Tatvato Gyadva Vishate Taraman Param. Only by bhakti, not by karma, not by jnana, not by yoga, not by any other means of approach can one. Actually, understand Krishna or even approach Krishna. The bodies are in the best position. Why? Because bhakti, as it develops, turns into the love for Krishna. And love for Krishna is the means by which one can approach Krishna. No other way. Krishna says that so many times, yogi nama pisarve sham madgatem deratmanaha, shradhavan bhajate yo mante me yukvatamo bhaktaha. And of your yogis, one who abides in me with great and transcendental faith, is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. So the bhaktis, the bhaktis, they're in the best position to approach Krishna, to know Krishna, and to receive the mercy of Krishna. Where all of the processes, they, some of them, they're even more rigorous to, to perform than bhakti. But still, because there's no devotion, some austerity, some penance, some knowledge. Still, they can approach Krishna. Krishna says, Patram Pushram Palam Tayam Yomi Bhakta Parasyati Taraham Bhakta Paritram Nasnami Prayatat Panoha. Offer me a leaf, a flower, fruit, and water with love. I will accept. He makes it sound very easy, but the process is with love, with bhakti. But people say, well, how can I love Krishna? I don't know anything about Krishna. And even if, even I know something about Krishna, I still don't have love for Krishna. Well, at least one's on the right path. Mother Yasoda, she has so much love that she's running and the flowers are falling from her hair. Although she is quite heavy, still, uh, she couldn't catch Krishna. It was only when Krishna decided to get caught that she actually caught him. And he did that because of her devotion. They wanted to please his mother, who was trying so hard to catch him. Krishna agreed to be caught. And it, of course, it mentions, and it mentions throughout this, the essence of this pastimes that unless Krishna agrees, 
you can't catch him. But the more bhakti you have, the more love you have for Krishna, the easier it becomes to catch Krishna. But still requires Krishna's confirmation. Otherwise, we can't approach Krishna. So that is Krishna. And uh, He caught him, but actually, and I'll explain later that he he slowed down so he she could catch him. Otherwise, even for anyone, if Krishna doesn't want to get caught, no one can catch him. Even if he decides not to get caught by his devotee, that's his prerogative. He can do that. He always remains in the position of superiority in all situations. But there is bhakti, there's bhakta and bhagavan. Bhakti is the process, bhakta is the bhavoti, bhagavan is Krishna. Uh, out of the three, bhakti is the most powerful because bhakti is even better than Krishna because it can capture Krishna. Although a bhakta is inferior to Krishna in all respects still. Krishna cannot resist the natural love for his devotee. And you see that even in this world. If someone loves you, even if you don't love them, you're inclined to them. You show them some favor. You reciprocate with them. Because just by their love, they attract you. And so we went, because that's natural. And so Krishna, he's natural. He's attracted by those who love him. But he's so powerful that he doesn't have to acquiesce to anything, even love, but he does, because that's his nature. So Prabhupada uses a to love Krishna. And he's easy to love because he's all attractive. His names, his forms, his qualities, his pastimes, his beauty, his strength, his knowledge, his fame, renunciation, his uh, all of these qualities are Krishna in full. But still, he's attracted to love. And Mother Yasoda, she's working hard. She's trying her best to catch Krishna. And uh, why? Because she's his mother, and she's, th she's thinking, boy, he's somebody. And I have work to do in my house. My work is for Krishna. Krishna won't even let me do the work that I need to do for him because he's always attracting my attention by his naughtiness and mischievousness. So she's got a stick. Krishna's afraid of the stick. Of course, when she sees Krishna being afraid of the stick, she drops the stick. Because she doesn't want to cause too much fear in the mind of her child. So although she starts off with a stick, she drops him. But she finally catches him. And, um, and now you're getting into the essence of this particular Leela. So we can learn from Mother Yasoda what is pure bhakti? That she only wants to catch Krishna for Krishna's benefit. A parent will want to discipline the child for the child's benefit. The guru will reprimand the disciple for the disciple's benefit. The teacher may take issue with the student 
because the student needs to learn. So in many cases of superiority, it's always for the inferior person. But in this role as a mother, she's in the superior position. Her mother is always superior to her son, looks after her son, and does everything a mother would do for the benefit of the son. Nowadays, because of the effects of Kali Yuga, motherhood has been somewhat damaged, not completely, but to a certain degree that people, sometimes the mothers consider their children a burden. And they want to, um, sometimes they neglect children or um, sometimes even worse than that, when they get pregnant, they think, I don't even want this child. It will make it too difficult for me to raise him or her. So they turn to a simple activity of abortion. So in this age, we see how this natural principle of loving mother has been somewhat marginalized or even crippled by the effects of Kali Yuga. Because in Kali Yuga, people are manda sumanda mata yom They're lazy, misguided, unlucky, and always disturbed, and full of all bad quality. This is the nature of this age. But if one takes the devotional service seriously, not mechanically, or not well, my friends took the devotional service, therefore I should take to it. Let me try it out. That's all right. One can come to devotional service by any means, but once one understands what is the uh, activities of devotional service, one should be seriously engaged in devotional service. One should not take it whimsically. <laughs> Because devotional service is powerful. It is Bhakti Devi itself. It's a personification of the internal energy of Krishna known as Srimati Radharani. Radharani is Bhakti Devi. She is the internal energy. She is pure devotional service personified. And she teaches Bhakti. Therefore, if you want to learn the science of Bhakti, one has to approach Krishna through his pure spiritual energy, Srimati Radharani. But even that is a very elevated form of approach. One should approach the Lord through his pure devotee, who is a representation or representative of Srimati Radharani. As it says in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the spiritual master comes from the tattva or from the line of either Lord Nityananda or Srimati Radharani. Both are energies of the Supreme Lord who are the Supreme Lord himself, who serve the Supreme Lord for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord, although they, they are the Supreme Lord also. So in Vrindavan, it's, it's Radharani. Navadvipa is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of Radharani, assisted by his brother, who is in the mood of Sakyaras, or friendship, the form of Sri Nityananda. So we pray to Lord Nityananda, hey Nitai, give me shelter at your lotus feet and, and speak, uh, speak good words on behalf of myself to Lord Chaitanya. May Lord Chaitanya grace his mercy upon me. So devotional service must be accompanied by sufficient prayers. Prayers are a very big part of devotional service. And prayers attract the mind of Krishna. Ah. 
when the prayers are done sincerely, regularly, regular means every day, and without any motivation, pure prayer. Prabhupada used to say, I only ask my spiritual master one question. How can I serve you? Prabhupada was showing by his own example, what is bhakti? Bhakti means serve. That's all. Enter, we enter bhakti to learn and we learn uh, to serve. Service takes many forms. And is there one service that's better than another? No. All service is equal because service is the internal energy of the Lord. But there is one service that attracts Krishna's attention more than anything. And that is those who give Krishna consciousness to others. They get noticed by Krishna very fast and are guaranteed uh, the highest elevation in spiritual life. If they continue to serve in that mood of showing compassion to the fallen souls by helping the fallen souls to become less fallen by engaging them and bringing them to the, to the shore of bhakti. Bhakti is like a great ocean. And in that ocean, there's much variety. Just like in an ocean, you find so much variety inside of oceans. Because of its vastness, it also has great variety, different types of fishes, different types of elements, different types of uh, energies. The ocean is quite multi-complex. So bhakti is like that, but the complexity is different times with different ways we can show our love for Krishna by serving Krishna. And love is the natural propensity of the living being. And those who fail to reach the platform of love in life live a very unhappy and very uh, sad life. Uh, even in the material world, if one is experiencing love with others, there's some happiness there. There's some joy, some satisfaction. Two souls and exchanging uh, affectionate relationships satisfies to some degree. Of course, in the material world, nothing is perfect. And so because of the time element, things change. But with Krishna, the time element works in such a way as to bring the devotee to a higher level of loving relationship. So when you practice loving Krishna, it only gets better and more intense. And there's different stages of that love. And as we go through the stages of bhakti, bhakti has nine stages. Adhastrata, Sarusanga, Pajnakriya, Anartha Nivrishti, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhava, and ultimately Prema. Adhastrata means faith, and faith that brings one into the association of devotees. In the association of devotees, Sadhu Sangha, one learns the process. As Sadhu Sangha matures, one becomes serious and wants to make the process a lifetime focus. And then they take initiation from the spiritual master and gradually through the guidance of the spiritual master, they just start to eliminate all of the blocks, all of the wrong activities, all of the wrong mindsets, all of the material attachments. And at one point they reach nishta. Nishta means 75% of all of my and arthas or blocks are removed and one is fixed. When one gets to nishta, one is fixed. One does not fall down. And in nishta, one can uh, do nice devotional service to Krishna. And as nishta matures, it turns into ruchi. Ruchi means sweetness. There's in a prasanatmana, shoshitina, kanshati, samasarveshu, bhuteshu, 
my bhakti la take from that uh, there is a sweetness, a happiness, a joyfulness that comes with bhakti. And that becomes constant in the heart and mind of a devotee and enjoys the process of service. When that matures to, to its ultimate, it turns to ashakti. The shakti means one becomes very really attached to Krishna. One cannot, even for a moment, not serve Krishna. One is thinking about Krishna. One is making plans to do more service to Krishna. One doesn't waste even a moment of time in any other activity except service to Krishna. And then as a shakti develops, it turns into bhava. One starts to feel loving affection for Krishna and different sentiments of moods. And they're expressed in different uh, moods of itself. And these are like preliminary stages of love when it's, you know, when it's feeling, when one sees a Christian, picture of Krishna or a deity of Krishna, one starts to feel affection for that deity when it becomes attracted. As that stage develops to its, there's six stages in bhava. Once bhava reaches its final stage, it turns into prema. And prema is pure love of God. Pure love of God has eight stages. Um, in those eight stages, one goes through higher and higher stages of ecstatic loving feelings for Krishna. And two, they reach mahabhava. And mahabhava is the ultimate stage of loving relation. There's only three people in the world who have ever reached Mahabhava, Srimati Radharani, Lord Chaitanya, and Madhavendra Puri. There's no fourth person. Mahabhava is the highest. And then one can no longer live in this world. One will automatically go back to God and to be with Krishna in loving relationship. Krishna will take that soul back. And this is the process. And all of it centers around service to Krishna. Service to Krishna means faith in the instructions of the spiritual master and determination in the execution of devotional service. In order for devotional service to manifest its qualities, one must be enthusiastic. One cannot be mechanical, or lazy, or uh, routine. One has to be enthusiastic in the execution of devotional service. One has to be determined despite any obstacles that appear. And, and by that determination, one continues to serve the Lord. But one also has to become patient because sometimes Krishna makes the devotee wait before he reciprocates. So that patience is there. That patience comes by association with devotees and then learning the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So, Utsaham Nishtaya Daryat Tattat Karma Pravartana. These are the principles that must be applied to our devotional service. Rupa Goswami describes them here. Malaya Soda has all of these in full. She's completely absorbed in serving Krishna. She knows nothing but Krishna. She wants to please Krishna. As a mother, to her child, she wants to do what that child, how that child will benefit, how he will grow up nicely, healthy, and have everything he needs for a happy life. Mali Yasoda doesn't know Krishna is God, but her love is pure. And because she doesn't know, uh, she can she can chastise him, she can she can do so many things in the superior position to execute her loving relationship as a mother. This is the advantage of the Vatsayaras as Krishna becomes subordinate in this mood of being controlled by his parents, especially in this case, Mahi So Prabhupada said, Krishna is easy to catch. <laughs> If you have a little bit of love and you try to catch him, that love will increase more and more, the more you hear about him. So this month of Damodar is a month of hearing more about Krishna, learning more about Krishna, engaging more in devotional service to Krishna. It's a great opportunity for spiritual advancement. It's not an opportunity to sit back and 
become routine and just go on. One should think of ways to increase their devotional services. So some devotees perform austerities. Some devotees take on extra, extra vows, such as chanting extra rounds. Some devotees chant 25 rounds a day. Some do go up to 32. Some even go to 64 rounds. And there are also devotees who even go higher than that. They chant practically the whole day. There's others who just take one meal a day. They'll just take one meal either in the evening or in the afternoon and refrain. There's others who, who make vows, such as, I won't take any sugar this month. And other, other devotees say, I won't say anything negative about anybody, anything, anybody this month. Oh, uh, different vows that devotees take in order to uh, increase the quality of their bhakti. And there's a whole limit uh, on understanding. And uh, the whole process of Dhammadar is wonderful in the sense that we gather together at night and we all come together and sing the beautiful song and glorification of the Lord by Satyavat Muni, who is a great devotee of Lord Dhammadar. And we invite friends, relatives, and other persons who join us to offer candles. It becomes something curious to the non-devotees. So non-devotees can benefit a lot by this particular lila, and they also have come in and light their candles. Like we go to the temple in the evening here in, uh, in uh, Mayapur, and there are thousands of devotees, literally thousands of devotees crowding into the temple, offering their ghee lamps to the Lord becomes so crowded that it becomes hard to move. <laughs> but many of the people who come, they just come because their friends, relatives, family members have brought them there. And so they also perform the activity and get some spiritual benefit. So it's a, it's a pastime where many people can take part because it's very interesting, kind of novelty. And the songs are so beautifully sung by the devotees describing the glories of Amad. Namam Miswaram Satchit Anandarupam Lasat Kundalam Goku He Rajamanam. Devotees like to sing Damodar Astikam. Okay. These are some of the wonderful in nuances about this wonderful month of Dhammadar and the process of pure devotional service. And to come to devotional service is very, very rare. Not easy to come to devotional service. One might think, well, I came to devotional service. You're a rare person. Very few can actually come to devotional service. Although it is easily performed, very few can take it up because of their attachments to material life. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for this very beautiful class. Um, just I would like to quickly revise a few points. Uh, you said mentioned like only by bhakti uh, one can approach Krishna, not by karmis or uh, karma yoga or kyanis or yogis, only by bhakti and um, only by one should engage. Unless Krishna approaches, agrees, one cannot approach Krishna. Uh, you mentioned like even though we like perform more devotional service, unless Krishna agrees, we cannot approach Krishna. Uh, it's very beautiful and uh, said like how you, much can, you can approach Krishna but Krishna only when Krishna agrees does he reciprocate okay, then there she is. and he just sits there and, and accepts your service he doesn't reciprocate he's accepting it but you don't feel the reciprocation but still because he's a accepting it you are satisfied with that but when he 
reciprocates, then you feel the ecstasy of Krishna consciousness. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, and you said one yeah. should see. Oh, sorry, yes, okay. open it up for questions. Yeah? Yes, Guru Maharaj, sure. Yeah, um, thank you, Guru Maharaj, again, once again, for this beautiful class. Um, dear devotees, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or uh, realizations, uh, please feel free to unmute and talk, or you can type in the chat box or you can raise your hand. Raj Prabhu, please go ahead. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to yourself, Raj. All glories to all of the devotees. Uh, Raj, you said that a devotee needs to have determination and to have patience. <laughs> Sometimes I find that when we try to become more serious in devotional service, then lots of new obstacles come and often they're bigger obstacles. And sometimes when we try to try with determination to get round or overcome the obstacles, on some cases we may be successful, on some cases we're not successful. So, how can we understand in which circumstances we should, we failed on our determination and we should just be patient? Uh, determination is a stage. Mm, patience is a, the symptom of surrender. If you're expecting something from Krishna, then you're not patient. Therefore, you're not really surrendered. He said, serve for the sake of service and not expecting anything in return. But Krishna will reciprocate, sometimes immediately, sometimes always, sometimes occasionally. Krishna is God, and he is a person, he is the most intelligent of all beings, and he uses, he understands how best to reciprocate or not reciprocate, because not reciprocating with a devotee is another form of reciprocation. A lot of times he wants to test just to see, are we really want him or do we really, we're just making some, you know, some enthusiastic effort and all of a sudden we become enthusiastic and we go on for a few days and we're really trying hard and we're giving it all and then after a few days we think, ah, oh, this is too much, we quit, we slow down. So uh, Krishna knows, you know, what, what is our mentality. So a lot of times he makes us, he tests us by just causing us to become patient. But patience is a symptom of surrender. Patience comes by the association of devotees. When you associate with devotees, you're happy and you don't look for anything. Simply devotional association is so satisfying that you think you don't think, oh, what am I getting? Am I getting bhakti or not getting bhakti? Am I happy or not? No, you're happy because when you associate with devotees, the devotee association brings about satisfaction and happiness. And um, uh, by cultivating some preliminary knowledge of Krishna and the position of, of Krishna and the devotional service, it allows us to develop patience. The more, the more you're in knowledge of the process, the more easier it is to become patient in the process of devotional service. The Bhaktivinoda Thakur indicates awareness of spiritual principles as a foundation for developing patience or spiritual knowledge. So you have to study these books because if you take the word 
in its basic definition, you won't understand. Like this, what does enthusiasm mean? So I can ask the, the uh, assembly of devotees, what is the word enthusiasm? What does it mean in, in terms of devotionism? What does it mean to be enthusiastic? What is Rupa Goswami's definition of enthusiasm? Intelligent endeavor in Krishna consciousness is enthusiasm. It's partly right, but it's not complete. Um, ready to always ready to serve, even if you have any obstacles. There's more to it. There's one word that is very fundamental to the principle of intelligence. Uh, Sri Devi got most of it, but she left out that one word. To endeavor with intelligence. In other words, to execute the, the, the service according to the instructions of the guru and according to the instructions of Shastra. That's intel. So Rupa Goswami gives that definition. Enthusiasm means to endeavor in Krishna consciousness with intelligence. Not whimsically, not occasionally, not. One has to be intelligent. Papa said this, this, this process is for the most intelligent people. Fools can't take it up because they can't do it. So then sometimes devotees think, well, I'm not so intelligent. And that question came to Prabhupada many times. Prabhupada, I'm not so intelligent. Prabhupada said, then go get some. Find some find somebody who's intelligent and learn from them. It's not an excuse, well, I'm not so intelligent. No, you have to be if you want to execute this process. Otherwise, Maya will kick you around and you won't be able, to, although you're trying to serve, you're simply being kicked because you don't know how, you don't know the process of bhakti. The bhakti process is simple, but then again, you'll find yourself where you have you have a you you have a choice between Maya and Krishna, and there's where your intelligence must come in to save you from making the wrong decision. But even if you can't understand the right decision, ask ask one who is your spiritual master who is or is on the same level of your spiritual master or one who's qualified to give the right understanding. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhuji. Um, so we have one more question by Scarlett Mataji. Uh, Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisance. All glory is to Srila Prabhupada, all glory is to you, Your Holiness Guru um, Can Can it be that we get tested or Krishna have fun when, when you want to do, you learn about it, uh, learn about Krishna consciousness, and you will. You want to uh, do service or do something, uh, but then it it happens big situation that makes you makes it impossible for you to do that because you have to take care of that situation. For instance, health health problem that it makes it that you have to go to the doctor and the doctor does, don't give you appointment as you need, wish for anyway, and so on and so on. 
uh, and it makes it impossible to do uh, the service, to do the devotional service. Could it be that Lord Krishna having fun and just testing and want to know how how you are determined in the in the thing? You have to understand one principle. If you understand this, then you understand bhakti. That is, no material situation can interfere with bhakti. Bhakti is always is not part of this material energy. So even if you're going to the doctor, you can still remember Krishna. And if you're remembering Krishna, that's devotional sound. Okay, okay. Even if you're going to the doctor, you can always chant Hare Krishna. Okay. That's the devotional service. I you thought may, that... You may not be able to do that service that you wanted to do, but you can always serve in any situation because material energy cannot stop fuck you. It's not possible. If you are determined to serve, you can always remember Krishna. You can always chant Krishna's name. You can always uh, pick up a book and read something. You can always, you always, you have the opportunity to serve all the time. Even if you're sick, laying in the bed, you can turn on the tape and listen to Srila Prabhupada or hear the Maha Mantra. That's devotional service. Okay, I, I thought devotional service is only when you are doing it in temple or in front of your altar. This is the only uh, devotional service. Okay, okay, then I understand. Okay, thank you. Devotional service is not dependent on anything material. Yeah, thank you, Mataji, for that next question. So even though you're not able to do physically, still remembering and hearing is also a devotional service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may not do the service you want to do or was supposed to do, but you can always do service at any time. Mm -hmm. When the devotee, he, he was traveling and he lost his computer. And and now he didn't have his computer and he was the person who, he was a GBC person who needs his computer to do his service for the GBC. But he said, I lost my computer, I couldn't do my service to the GBC, but I was reading for three days. So he got his computer back. So he, he, was, he was able to read Prabhupada's book. Hey, the devotional service is available if you want it. Yeah, thank you, Raj. Thank you so much for clarifying that because sometimes we always get discouraged uh, if we cannot really go and help uh, a temple due to some other um, challenges. So at least that time we can engage in reading and other services at home. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not one way. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Mataji, for that question. So, dear devotees, any questions, comments? Um, today's class. I see on the chat. Okay. Uh, so, Guru Maharaj, uh, just I uh, have explained, uh, but still I'm very less intelligent. Uh, so, I just wanted to clarify, like karma yoga. You said like better, but still, I mean they are better, but still they are attached to the material world, so they cannot attain Krishna. So even though we are devotees, we are engaged in devotional service, still we have that mixed feelings. We still have that uh, little bit of desires. So- We're mixed, uh, devotee. We are mixed devotee. Okay. Mixed devotion. So karma, mishra, bhakti. So- yeah. mm -hmm. Bhakti mixed with your, with karma as well. Okay. So even though we are engaged, we are karma yoga. You're, you're, if you want to get clean, you get in the shower. So as soon as you turn the shower on, you're not clean. You still have to go through the process of finishing the shower. Mm -hmm. So when you come into bhakti, you still have material desires, but that's because you're in the right place, you're getting clean. Stay in the shower. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't leave. Yes, Guru Maharaj, yes, yes. The constant uh, 
engagement in this devotional service will help us to clean, purify. Yeah, it's a process. Process, yeah. And I like the different stages of bhakti you explained, you know, the ruchi, nishta, ruchi, bhava. So, I mean, we have that bhava, like, you know, completely. We are happy whenever we are in devotee association, whenever we are engaged in a service, but we still also have some desires. So, as you said, constant shower will help us to completely attain that uh, focus. Yeah, just, just don't try to fulfill your material desires. Mm -hmm. They may be there, but you don't have, you have a choice whether to, to act, on, act on them or not act on them. Mm -hmm. okay. the, le the less time, you, the least time you act on them, the, the weaker they get. Each time you try to act on them, they get stronger. Mm -hmm. But gradually, when you neglect your material desires, stay fixed in bhakti by the strength of bhakti, these desires go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We can so, see that. We all come into devotional service at a certain stage. Now we're in for maybe a couple of years, maybe even more. We can see, oh, many years ago, that's where I was. Now look where now I'm here. You can see how much progress you've made since you began. And stay in, and you'll make more and more progress. What you're attached to now won't be there for maybe a year or two later. Yes, Guru Maharaj, definitely. We see that, you know. It's a, it's a gradual process. Yes, Guru Maharaj, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Raj Prabhu, please go ahead. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, just wanted you to clarify this something for me. Uh, it's like the when we're talking about the uh, bhakti or love, Krishna, like I feel like at the moment I only have this tiny drop of speck of love, for Krishna. And I'm trying, I'm trying hard to increase or expand that. But is the atma already does does the atma already have pure love for Krishna and is it a case that that's just like encased in like uh, a hard casing or steel casing and we're trying to melt that down or break through it or is it that we yeah, that, hard, that hard casing is the bodily conception of life mm -hmm. that hard casing is the material desires the hard casing is um, marginalizing Krishna's position and there's so many uh, anarthas that make up this casing. And the biggest, uh, the biggest casing is a desire to be independent from God. That's the biggest shell of the casing. We can't be independent, but still we want to be independent. When you understand bhakti, you understand Krishna's everything. And when you understand Krishna's everything, what's the use of trying to fight it? Just surrender. <laughs> That's not. Now, if you want to surrender and you want to naturally develop your attraction for Krishna, hear more about Krishna. Hear his pastimes and serve his devotees, chant his holy name. All of these will increase your attraction to Krishna. As your attraction to Krishna comes, these, these, uh, the, the, the features of this casing starts to become less and finally it's gone completely. Because so the casing is false. It's uh, simply that something the mind has created due to the association of matter. It'll dissolve. So you take an aspirin, aspirin tablet, and you throw it into water, and then gradually, because of the uh, being in the water, the tablet starts to fizz, and gradually you watch it, and then it completely disappears. The effects of the aspirin are, are now have been changed into something else, but the actual aspirin in its physical form is no longer 
there. So this casing that's around us is lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, envy, desire to be independent of Krishna, desire to enjoy separate from Krishna. There are there are unlimited, not unlimited, but there are many ways that the material energy encases the soul into illusion. And the biggest illusion is I can be happy without pushing. <laughs> if I can just get this material situation, then I'll be happy. If I can get just get this relationship together, I'll be happy. If I can just acquire these material things, I'll be happy. But these are all features of the illusionary energy. No one can be happy without Krishna. So if I Happiness that comes in the material world is given some understanding from different perspectives. But from the highest perspective, it says, Krishna says, Dukalya Masastrata. That this place is temporary and it's miserable. He doesn't say it's, it's partially miserable. He says it's miserable. Why? Because it separates one from Krishna. And give one this, this, this false sense that I can be happy without Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, so absorb yourself, absorb your activities, your mind, senses, intelligence in Krishna more and more, and Krishna will become more and more your focus in life. As you go through the different stages of bhakti, when you re reach nishta, you're, you're fixed. Nobody can knock you out of that position. You're not going to fall down. You may not have love of God, but still you're fixed. Thank you. Thank you, Pumash. Um, so uh, we have a question by Srimati Mataji. Mataji, please go ahead. Ragishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All rest to Shri Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much uh, for this uh, beautiful class and uh, nice uh, discussion with Raj Prabhu. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, you were talking about taking vows in this Kartik month, uh, but um, I'm I'm struggling in that area, Guru Maharaj. Like I always uh, think that before starting of this month, I I'll do that, I'll do this, but. Uh, um, I'm not able to take any vow or keep it up in the whole month, uh, Guru Maharaj. It's getting very. What are, you, what are you What are you attached to the most? Attached to my body. No, specifically. Like you like sugar. Oh, okay. Um, if you like sugar, no, give it up. Maharaj, I don't. I, I'm not attached to sweets. Um, but uh, I don't know, Guru Maharaj, I'm not able to figure it out. Um, Find I out something you're attached to and try to give it up. Mm. Attached to being in control. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're in control for Krishna, that's a good attachment. <laughs> if I am controlling, Guru Maharaj. Huh? <laughs> if I am controlling. <laughs> If you're controlling for Krishna, then, then that's the best thing. <laughs> we want that. Not Krishna, Guru Maharaj, but, but around me, the people around me. I well, if you, if you control them so they become Krishna conscious, that's good. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm trying. Yeah. So just think of something that, you know, that you've been wanting to give up. Mm. And then uh, make this month we focus and you'll get extra mercy because it's something, something that you've been struggling with. You think, all right, I'm going to give it up this month. And then uh, you make that determined effort and 
because of the month of Damodar, you get extra mercy. Have different, or if you want to just increase your bhakti, increase your rounds, increase your time for reading, reduce eating, reduce sleeping. Yeah. It's good to try increase. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking in that direction only, Guru. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I'm um, I increase my reading time, um, but uh, I'm not able to increase the rounds, number of rounds. Um, that's I'm you struggling. Guru Maharaj, you want to? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I want to, but I don't know. Um, somehow, a um, lot of many things I'm doing and um, all packed up my day. So I don't know, Guru Maharaj. I'm, I'm, I have everything in my mind, but I'm not able to do it. Um, that's the problem, Guru Maharaj. That's me. Well, you have two children. You have to ensure that they function. <laughs> and you sort of do that, Krishna. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Two, two children, and they require a mother. But Sukhavaha, what would you suggest? How would you? How would you answer that question? He wants to increase the rounds, but she can't do it for some reason. What would you suggest? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your lotus feet. Don't put me in that situation, Guru Maharaj. You are the best person to answer it. I have nobody to answer. I was going to ask you a question about something similar to <laughs> Mataji, but. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was thinking you are ready to answer that question. Where where is uh is Frankie Shuri here? She was here, I don't see her anymore. Yeah, she dropped off. She, she's done. I can only say one thing in the thing, Srimati Mataji, that uh when I I was struggling, like, you know, when uh, I remember Guru Maharaj telling me, make a schedule of your day. And then according to that, just add whatever you want to do it. And that helps me, if suppose something like that, if you can do it and if you want, if that can help you. But I, I know sometimes it doesn't go according yeah. to schedule, but still it helps. Yeah, it's Mataji. But um, the thing is, uh, I'm not able to be uh, consistent in that schedule. That's the mm -hmm. problem. Suddenly something comes up. Or uh, today morning, for example, um, I thought I'll, I woke up early, but uh, I thought of chanting something, uh, some rounds before the class. Um, but suddenly something came up. So my half an hour or 40 minutes time went in that. So <laughs> I was so disappointed. Oh, I thought of doing something else and something else came up. Oh, Krishna. Mm -hmm. it happened like that I was thinking um, and uh, I'm not able to especially for Karthik month since two years Guru Maharaj I am trying to um, do extra rounds or some um, extra austerity but I don't know somehow um, my body is not cooperating or my mind is not there yet I don't know what's happening but uh, I'm not able to do anything else <laughs> well, listen to your mind <laughs> yes Guru Maharaj yeah. <laughs> That's true, yes. There's another person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what Sukhava has said is good advice, try to make a schedule. And, you know, sometimes the schedule gets broken by the unavoidable circumstance. But at least if you have a schedule, you have something to work with. Yes, good manager. I'll take up, I'll take any help, um, help with any devotee and I'll try to do the Guru Maharaj, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Just I want to share with you because if I share with you, I'll feel um, like uh, empowered and uh, I don't know if I don't share with you, I'll feel something lacking. If I share with you, I'll get some relief. So that's why I want to share. With you. Well, I, I give you my best wishes, whatever blessings I can offer. Thank you. To give you the determination and the uh, opportunity to fulfill your vows during this month of practice. Yes, good much. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah. So, Kala Mataji, you see her raised. Do you have any question? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mataji. Uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Regarding um, preaching, I wanted to have one question. Uh, recently, when we went to do the deep dan uh, in the temple, I noticed that loads of people were not, not loads of people, I wouldn't say devotees, but loads of uh, uh, members of congregation who came to the temple were not aware about the Lord Damodar, his pastimes. They knew about the pastimes were Kartik month and stuff. And when we were trying to tell them about uh, Kartik months and the benefit of doing some devotional service in this month, they said, nobody has told us before. And where did you get? these things we were giving them shastras um, uh, quotations what we had we had written it down that on this shastra they say this I said said oh why why were we not told anything like this before so is it something like missed completely nobody knows about it of Kartik month's glories yeah they have a limited understanding they know it's it's a time for during this month, there's, uh, you know, in the Hindu culture, there's a time for doing pujas to the different devas. And that's what they know about Kartik. And there's puja to Lakshmi, and there's puja to mm. Deva, and there's puja to different devas. Yeah. So people know that. So they, they, they come to the temple this month to enhance their pujas to the different devas. So much, and, um, but then there's Diwali. Everybody knows about Diwali. Mm -hmm. They know that they were growing up in India. Diwali means having a bunch of sweets ready at your house because somebody yeah. will come to your house and you can give them some sweets. That's all they know. <laughs> yeah, they they no, they know about Lakshmi Puja. They do. They say, "Oh, we do Lakshmi Puja. We do Ganpati Puja." But nothing more than that. Nobody has told us all these things before. It was yeah. nice. They they really appreciated that we were telling all these um, informations, giving away. But um, surprisingly, that nobody knows about it. Temples are meant to be educational uh, facilities where people learn. Mm -hmm. who, what is Krishna? How to serve Krishna? What is their relationship with Krishna? Our temples should have, do have regular sessions. We should invite everyone to come and learn about Krishna, hear more about Krishna. Mm -hmm. And then they will also hear about bhakti. Mm -hmm. When, when we tell them, come and, uh, uh, you know, come to our regular sessions, they don't have time. <laughs> they say, no, we don't have time. We cannot make it. We will see. We will see. Nobody wants to come. <laughs> Prabhupada, when Prabhupada was in Delhi before he came to America, he, was, he started his Back to Back uh, magazine, which was just one page, both sides. He would write articles and then he would write the article, who would take it to the printer, who would print it, make copies, and then he would go to the tea stalls in the belly and distribute this little sheet of back to Godhead. And um, he would offer, see here, just give maybe one or two pice, and you can learn about. And so he would offer them, and they would say, oh, Swamiji, what you're doing is so nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, so Prabhupada was hearing that so much. So one article he wrote in Back to Godhead was called No Time. He wrote an article based on the response. People have no time. They got time for everything but Krishna. <laughs> yeah. No, God, God is there, but we have our family. We have our programs. If we can fit God in, okay. Yeah, exactly. You feel like that they're doing that, that if they have time, they can do it. If they, Otherwise, it's not important for them to do something. How to convince those people that, no, come, it's, it's really important for you. Wow. When something goes wrong in their life, then they turn to God. 
Oh yeah, true. So, you know, Maya will be there to take up their life. All of their plans. When death comes along, you can't say, well, I have to go see my, my relatives. That's it. Sorry about that. You're mine now. <laughs> There's no time left for any of your programs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, true. So, therefore, die before dying. Learn how to give up those things which really are not beneficial to your ultimate welfare. What is that? Longevity in life, that means you are eternal. You don't, you don't take birth and you don't die. Taking mm -hmm. birth and dying is for the body. It's not for the soul. We want to live eternally, and we do live eternally. We can't live mm -hmm. eternally in this body. But we can live eternally with Krishna in the spiritual world. Mm. Well, we then we don't change bodies, then we stay in our pure spiritual body. And that is our desire ultimately. Mm. But it cannot be actualized or realized as long as we are in this material world. So we have to really prepare ourselves for our for our future mm. by using our time for Krishna. By using our intelligence for Krishna, using our abilities for Krishna. Thank you, Guru. That's such a great advice. I will, I will use them, please. One thing you can tell them, they say they have no time. You say, if you give time to Krishna, he'll give you more time. Mm. Say that with certainty, and it's sure it's, it's actually correct. Those who give the more, those who are the the busiest in Krishna consciousness always have more time to do more. That's so true, Guru Maharaj. That is absolutely right. Even in the material world, they say, if you want something done, ask a busy person. A person mm -hmm. who doesn't do anything, hardly, you ask them to do something because I have no time. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Um, uh, Guru Maharaj, I see a question by Raj Prabhu. Uh, will our prayers have more potency in this month? Will our prayers have more potency this month? Yes. The bhakti has more spiritual potency in this month, whether it's prayer or worship, chanting or serving, or going to any place. All of these are increased in spiritual potency. Everything. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhuji. I have one question by Scarlett Mataji. Mataji, please go ahead. I'm so sorry. I want to ask for forgiveness because on Wednesday and Thursday, I can't be in the class because I have appointment. Please forgive me. I want to have said it personally to you. Please forgive me that I can't attend to the class because the same time I have the appointment with the doctor. I hope it's okay. Well, you can always listen to the recording. Recording? Yeah, every one of these. these Look in the recording, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Well, if you have to, if you have some unavoidable activity, you can, yeah, you can take part by hearing the recording. I tried it. I, I asked for another time, but it, it was impossible. That's why I was, uh, I didn't have any choice to say it okay to this, to this time. So please uh, forgive me. <laughs> I'm going to look at the, the recording. I promise you. I will, yeah, as long as you do the recording, then you're forgiven. You I will do it. it, I promise. I will even uh, write a uh, <laughs> comment on it, I promise. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Can, you. you can listen to the recordings and ask you a question when you come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah. Um, dear devotees, any last minute questions uh, for this class before we end the class?
Okay, I don't see any question. Um, so it's eight, um, it's one hour 30 minutes past. Uh, so thank you so much again for your wonderful, beautiful class. Um, uh, so Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai, all Vaishnava Vrindi Ki Jai. Thank you very, very much, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.